Hi, I'd like to discuss the microbe electrifier and its uh, invaluable options. Here uh, we can see we have three models. The simple, which has only uh, 10 hertz output. The, uh, the light, which comes on when you get the minimal amount of uh, electrical current that you need to disable microbes and uh, the current control, of course. The Microbe Electrifier Plus has the option of a damped wave as well as the original square wave output. Pressing this test button you get to see the, uh, the action of the uh, alternating output which alternately lights these two green lights. The output light comes on when you're getting the minimal amount of current needed to do the job and you have the current control here and you have the frequency switch here in the middle position it's 4 hertz bottom position is 10 hertz top position is 40 hertz and then for people that want a little bit more diversity they can get the microbe electrifier DC electrifier combo the DC electrifier is uh, the best at fighting localized bacterial infections. Uh, examples would be like a dental infection, a kidney infection, a bladder infection, um, toenail fungus, things like that. <clears throat> this switch right here allows you to switch to DC or AC. AC is what is the normal blood electrification, which are these two put out. Um, let me show you something else. This is the, uh, the waveform, the square wave output. It goes from positive to negative, positive to negative. This is one cycle. When it comes back to here, that's one cycle. This is cycle number two. Um, the output is a square wave, unless you select the damped wave uh, option. Um, the, the actual amount of current that the body receives is not a square wave because of the capacitance in the body. You get a spike of current, which is what the red here is showing every time you switch directions. That spike is uh, somewhat beneficial also in uh, killing uh, bacteria and disabling virus, but it can limit the, uh, the peak amount of current or the average amount of current that you can apply when you're fighting a, a, um, a localized infection. If you want to use 4 hertz damped wave, you get this green waveform here, which it, it curves it off and, and keeps it from spiking. So if, if the limit would be right here, as far as how high you can go before it starts to be uncomfortable, you that with the normal square wave output you're limited because of the spikes. If you eliminate the spikes you can bring this level all the way up to here so you can uh, apply more electrical current when you're fighting localized infections which is beneficial want as much as possible. This illustration right here is for uh, showing what the frequency is. Hertz is a scientific word that stands for cycles per second. So in one second, beginning here all the way to here, a 4 hertz output will, will change direction eight times because one cycle is two directions. Positive direction, negative direction. One cycle. Positive direction, negative direction. Two cycles. Three, four. That's four, four hertz. Ten hertz is more. It changes directions 10 times in one second and 40 Hertz would be even four times more than this more compact any of those are effective at fighting bacteria and virus in the blood I prefer 10 Hertz because it's right at the beginning of the safe zone as far as um, no, no very little not no but very little transfection
Speaking of transfection, let's look at my transfection page. This chart and this scientific study compares the amount of trans transfection to the frequency applied. This top one is a square wave. This is triangle wave and this is sine wave. So at 4 Hertz we get approximately 20,000 on this on their range of transfection. At 10 Hertz we get 400. What is 400 divided by 20,000? It's so you get 2% in the transfection at 10 Hertz that you do at 4 Hertz and even much less at 40 Hertz. But I've taken medicines, I've taken aspirin, everything. At 10 Hertz I have no problem. So that very small amount of 400 is, is not a problem. Why, you might ask, why does anyone need a blood electrifier? Well, there's the obvious answer of people with infections, a virus, bacteria, or fungus. But even healthy people can, uh, seemingly healthy people, can benefit from it because uh, it's been found that 7% of healthy people have uh, bacteria infections in their blood. If you look at this live blood cell analysis, you'll see these little white specks here in the blood plasma. These are two are um, immune cells and these others are uh, red blood cells. I'm going to play this video and you're going to see that these swirl around. They, they move like crazy. That's not because they're food particles. It's because they're, they're bacteria. Bacteria have uh, tails, not all of them, some of them do, have tails that help them to move around. They wiggle the tails and they move. You see how they're squiggling around? That's bacteria. Those are the two neutrophil and monophysite. That's just one example. I'm not saying that everyone has that, but I've had many reports of healthy people that said that they get an energy boost. Why would you get an energy boost? Because you're spending less energy of the immune system fighting the microbes that are circulating in the blood. Even if they're not causing disease, they're, they will they, they are contributors to disease, if not direct causative factors. Here are a couple of uh, research papers talking about bacteria in the blood. The very first sentence on this one is says that dark field microscopy of blood from healthy individuals revealed the existence of pleomorphic microorganisms, which means uh, pleomorphic is um, uh, form changing. This one, if you look down here, this, re re this report describes the isolation of bacteria from lysed filtered blood that appear to be present in a variant bacterial phase prior to becoming ordinary bacteria. It's also talking about pleomorphism. So there are studies pointing in that direction, even though it's generally considered that the, the blood is free of bacteria except in diseased people. That's the general opinion, opinion of doctors. But it's, from what I'm seeing, it's not 100% true. Another reason for um, increased energy with using the blood electrifier is that the uh, blood cells that clump together are caused to be separated. It, uh, when, when they are clumped together, they can't um, deliver um, oxygen and um, nutrients like they normally can. So it uh, is pretty much a disabling situation. From reading about it, I think it's mostly caused by excessive protein intake, which is kind of hard to avoid when all meals are pretty much centered around animal protein in our society, so um, 
that's one thing I like about using the blood rectifier is it brings my blood back to a normal state of being which is what you see here each blood cell is separate so each one can go into a very small capillary to go to the very farthest reaches of the body to deliver oxygen also another main advantage of mine is that uh, the use of the electrodes is from one wrist to the other wrist not both of them on the same this is what happens if you put both of them on the same wrist you put one electrode here and one electrode here the current will flow in this circuit and this circuit more readily than it will in this circuit these two these two arteries join right here so the amount of resistance for it to go all the way over here and all the way back over here is more than for it to go in this direction the result being by a test made by Bob Beck is that you have to turn the output current all the way up to 3 milliamps in order to get enough current in this direction here and for my own test no one can withstand 3 milliamps it's just too much so people turn it up to maybe 1.5 milliamps 2 milliamps and so they're getting that much less current in this part they're getting enough in this but it's a very minor amount of, uh, of blood so if you buy a device that has the, the two electrodes on one wrist you're having to turn all the way up until it's very uncomfortable and the amount of time it's going to take to get the same results the same effects is probably about four or five times as much as mine this picture right here shows the uh, blood circulatory system so if you put the electrodes on either side of the wrist over either of the two arteries it's going to take this path right here it's not going to go through the heart because the the, uh, the arteries join in this area above the heart so because electrical current always takes the path of least resistance it's not going to stop here come down here go through the heart then come back up here and then keep on going because that's extra an extra pathway it's 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 extra resistance so it doesn't do that so the only objection people have ever had to using the electrodes on both wrists is the idea of it, the uh, current going through the heart but as you can see here that's just not the case and they don't know they don't understand the the main uh, one of the main attributes of, of electricity that takes the path of least resistance so I I more than dislike units that have that is that are designed to use both electrodes on one wrist I hate them because they give back blood electrification a bad name because most people that do it that way don't get results and they walk away saying this shit don't work blah 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 so that's my two cents on that that's the that's a general overview of the of the three this is my favorite this is the one I always use because it's just handy having two in one device like recently I've had a stupid jaw infection that I've been fighting with the DC electrifier it's a slow process because it's exposed to this exposed to mouth bacteria so I'm gonna have a long long fight with that but I don't want to have a long long bout of using antibiotics it's just too too damaging to the uh, to the intestinal system the most popular unit of ours is the microbiotic plus which 
has three main advantages over most of the other, well, Beck Blood purifiers on the market. The fact that it shows you exactly when you're getting the minimal amount of current you need. The others don't. Most people just turn it up until they feel it and they actually might be doing some damage to their blood by doing that. My thought is, why would you use the maximum amount? Why not use the minimum amount? You just want just enough to kill the microbes. You don't want to upset anything else. That's why this light is here. And I think that's a major advantage of this. Um, the test light shows you that it's alternating in, in direction. It is alternating current. You have damped wave if you want to use 4 hertz to fight uh, localized infections if you just you just want to treat the blood you've got some systemic infection you don't need to spend any more than what the cost of the simple microelectrifier is that outputs 10 Hertz shows when the minimal amount of current is is being output and it gets the job done just fine so that's the conclusion of my presentation of my microelectrifiers. Thank you for watching.